I've created a starting point for an application that's going to read a file from the hard drive. It's got a button, it says read a file, and it's got a couple of text blocks. You can see them down here in the XAML and also up here on the designer's surface. Something I really enjoy about this new designer is that even when the text of a label or text block or the like is nothing, I can still find it here in the designer and I don't have to go through some of the gyrations that many of us are used to having to do to find nearly invisible controls that don't happen to have any text in them. If I take a look at the handler for this button, there's nothing here yet and that's what we need to do in order to finish this demo. I'm going to start by adding a few more using statements. They're already here, the storage and the storage pickers, because the way that I'm going to get the user to tell me what file to open is to use a file open picker. And I'm going to use the PPL tasks approach because that is, in my opinion, just the only sane way to deal with asynchronous Windows 8 programming. So I'm going to include pplTasks.h. Boy, I just love the autocomplete for include files. For C++ developers, this makes life so much nicer. And the namespace. Now, an interesting thing about the PPL namespace. In earlier versions, it was with a capital C. And now the preference is that you use the lowercase c. They're aliased to each other, but at some point, I think the capital one will go away. So make sure you use the lowercase one just to make your code a little more future-proof. And part of reading this file is going to involve using streams. So I'm just going to put the streams namespace up here for us that I know we're going to need. So I'm going to need a file open picker. And because File Open Picker is a WinRT class, you've got the documentation for it here on MSDN, the File Open Picker class. It's a public ref class, and it has various properties and methods that we'll talk about in a moment. I'm obviously going to ref new a File Open Picker. And it doesn't take any parameters. What am I going to put that in? The magic of auto. This will be make it a file open picker hat. Because that's what ref new file open picker returns, but I don't need to type the name twice. Now I can set to work putting some properties onto this. And no matter how you've ever asked the user what file they want to open before, I'm sure you're familiar with this concept of, you know, what should it say on the button? Should it say open? Should it say load? Should it say read? What kind of files do you want to show? Just text files, images, and so on. And where should we start? Those sorts of settings are common to any platform support for asking the user what to open. So let me just set a few of these. The view mode, your choices are list and thumbnail. And I'm going to start with thumbnail, let you see what that does, and then I'll show you what list does on a subsequent run. Now where should they start? I think the desktop will be as good a place as any. So we'll set the suggested start location. To desktop. And then for the file type, we append more. Uh, that's just the sort of pattern of how, how we do this, rather than trying to set it. And we're going to open text files. Just make sure this builds. Okay. Once you have an open picker, it seems like a fairly obvious thing to do would be to call some method on the open picker. We've got our properties all in place, so let's see what we can do. 
And you're looking for something like, hey, tell me what file you want. So there's not a lot of methods on this particular object. And there's two here whose words pick. That's excellent. It's a file picker. We use it to pick files. These are what we want. But you notice that they only have async versions. Pick multiple files async and pick single file async. There's no just pick single file. There's no show modal or do or anything like that. We only have async options. This is really the heart of learning to develop for Windows 8. That if you had a choice of synchronous and asynchronous methods and we just relied on everyone's unselfish nature to choose the more difficult async way, a significant number of us would not choose the more difficult async way. We'd reason about what our program was never going to be used over the network or what have you, and we just do things synchronously. So there is no synchronous option. We only have the asynchronous option. Now I've designed my UI with one text box to put the name of the file and one text box to put the contents of the file, so I don't want to pick multiple files async, so I guess I'll choose pick single file async and it doesn't take any parameters, so I know I want to call this, but what am I going to do with it? So with the PPL approach, I'm going to wrap a task around this call and then have a series of continuations using the word then to step through the things that I want to do. This returns an iAsync operation of storage file and I want to build a task of storage file around that. So I can't use auto here, I have to declare it myself. So I'm going to make a task of storage file handles, which I'll call pick file task. And I'll initialize that by passing into its constructor this operation that comes from calling pick single file async on my file picker. I can now kick off a series of thens. So pick file task dot then. And for now, let's just put a comment in here. What I want to do is open the file. Let's make this a comment. Once I have the file open, which is, as you might guess, an asynchronous operation, I'm going to want to read the file. And then I'm going to want to put the data into the text block. And that's the end of my kind of chain of continuations. And this is reasonably readable. You can make it more readable by putting in some line breaks like this. And I do this in real life to make sure that my brackets and semicolons end up in the right place. I kind of build the structure of what I'm trying to write first and then fill it in. And these comments aren't going to hurt anybody when it comes to understanding reading this code later. So let's tackle opening the file. Our task is a task of storage file, hat. The thens each take a lambda and I'm just going to put the lambda here after the comment, doesn't matter. And I like to write lambdas by hand by doing the three parts of them and then filling them in. The part in the round brackets is the part you don't really have any control over. Someone's going to call your lambda, what are they going to pass it? Well, if you have a task of storage file hats, when it completes your lambda is given a storage file hat. So let's do that. and I'll call it file. Now what do I want to do inside the body of this lambda? I have a file. I'd like to open it. 
So if we take a look on file and see what it has, it has copy, create, has some properties, and it has an open. Of course, open async because this is the Brave New World, so that's what I want to call. And it takes whether you want to open it to read or to write, so file access mode read. I can't just call this function. I have to do something with what it returns. And what does it return? It returns an I async operation of an I random access stream. Okay. What you do in order to enable your continuations to be chained is you have each lambda return what the next one's going to work on. So if I return this operation on the opening of the file, the then operates on that return. It would be nice to know that this was working before laboriously working our way through the other continuation statements. And we do have in the design a plan to put the file name into this text block. So I'm going to add a line of code to put the name of the file Now, you'll notice I'm getting some red wigglies. Some of the red wigglies that we get when working with lambdas under Windows 8 are not true, but this one is. It says, uh, I don't know what's going on here. I don't, I don't know what this text name is. Oh, I'm not capturing it. Now, when you want to capture member variables in a lambda, the way to do that is by capturing the this reference. Opinions varied in the early days as to whether that was really a good idea or not, and they seem to be coming down on the side of, yep, capture this, and then you can talk to member variables. Now, unfortunately, now that our Lambda has two lines of code in it, the compiler will no longer automatically figure out its return type. When all we did was return this, we didn't have to specify the return type of the Lambda. Now we do. I'll just confirm that by building for you. Okay, lots of general complaining and, and objections, which we can mostly fix by providing the return. So we can see here that it's an I async operation of an I random access stream. It's a hat of the stream and it's also a hat of the operation. And now we've specified the return type. These other continuation statements are currently not very well written. You can't call then on a comment, so I'm just going to comment them out so the code will build. Let's test it again. And the build succeeds. Now notice that we do have a red wiggly here, and it's just not true. Sometimes when you're in a beta, the IntelliSense is not quite caught up to the compiler. Trust the compiler. So let's run this code. Click the button. This is a file picker. And specifically, this is a file picker in thumbnail mode. When I choose this file, I can't see its name. I can just see that it is a text file. But it will pop up this extra information about it so I can see its name and location. It's not super convenient. If these were pictures, it'd be great because I'd be seeing thumbnails of the pictures or any other kind of file type that has a really good thumbnail. I'd rather see that probably than the name of the file. I'm going to go ahead and say open. And there's the name foo.txt. So that works. Let's come back into Visual Studio and stop debugging. And now I want to show you the list mode and just run it right away again. In list mode, I see the name of the file, the size of the file, and those sorts of things. And again, when I pause over it, I will get more information, including this nice big thumbnail. But for a notepad, the nice big thumbnail isn't very helpful. So let's choose that file and open it. 
And again, I get the name put into the text box. Not surprisingly, the code that figures out what file you chose and then processes it couldn't care less how the file picker showed it to you, simply that it got the file.